Hello crafty friends, welcome to Blue Day in Rainbow Week slash Fortnite. Today I'm going to create this happy birthday card for you using these dies. I've got some strip dies in two different thicknesses, a happy birthday circle cut out die thing, a small cover plate die and a square die. Right then, for my blues, I've got tumbled glass, Broken China, Salty Ocean, Uncharted Mariner. I think Broken China and Uncharted Mariner are um, ever so slightly greeny blues, but I'm going to put them with the blues today. And I'm going to cut some strips from some of the card that I'm going to blend my colours on. But I just want to get some colour down. I've got smooth white cardstock here and I'm going the full width of this A4 bit paper because my strip dies uh, cut from that length and that will give me lots to play with. So we'll just start with the broken china there. No, that's tumble glass. Now the broken china. I'm working from light to dark so that I don't have to change my blending brush. I'm not going to contaminate my ink pads. I can always give it a bit of a wipe on a microfiber cloth. Now some salty ocean. So you can see how that's a different kind of blue. That's a lot brighter, less green. And then the Uncharted Mariner. And that's a kind of turquoise, I think, this one. It's a lovely, dark, rich, bluey green, greeny blue. Blue. They all work well, these colours together. So I'm going to give this a bit of a a blast with my hair dryer, I think, just to encourage it to dry before I do my die cutting. And now I'm going to cut some strips. I don't particularly want the blendy part for this, so I'm just going to take from the solid colour. My card blank is five and three quarter by five and three quarter smooth white cardstock, and I've chopped another one in half to create a panel that's going to go on the front of that. And I will cut that out with this large square die. But before I do that, I'm going to take my strips here and arrange them on my card panel. Just checking my fingers are clean, more or less. And I'm eventually going to cut out this happy birthday circle sentiment die from this panel when it's ready. But I'm going to just start adding my strips and I want to have I suppose actually I want to position that on there because I'm, I want this to cut through the strips that I'm going to put across so just to hold everything in place while I do that I'm going to put this sticky note here put that there roughly where I'm going to cut it out from and lay that on like that so that's going to be roughly about there that's going to be roughly about there I think and then I'm going to go down and add my strips I'm going to go thick thin thick thin and in the order that I inked them so tumbled glass, broken china, salty ocean, uncharted mariner. And I'm going to repeat that till I get to the bottom of my circle-ish. So I think the best thing to do will be to put some double-sided sticky down now. Now I've, I've kind of got a vision for where this is going. I'll just turn it because I think it'll be easier for me to line things up from this direction. Okay. 
and I think I will add this last skinny blue one and then it starts as it finishes or finishes as it starts and because this is super skinny I'm just going to pop some glue down the back just grabbed this as a two-way glue pen Now, I am going to cut this down with that big square die, but to remove sticky bits, I'm just going to trim off the edge, just so that things don't stick to other things. So that's that then. I'm going to cut that down with the square die to create my panel. Oops, I'll hold that down with a sticky note. But I want to cut an aperture in this bit here, but I don't want to cut the happy birthday out of this. I want to preserve this stripey bit. So I'm going to put this circle die on here and it is roughly, I think, the same size as this circle. I have, I have cut it before, so I think it will do. I'm going to hold that in place. Again with some sticky note and I cut that. So I think that has cut the white bit perfectly but because this is a bit thicker it's not quite as good but if I pull it back this way it'll just um, snag the back it won't damage the front and this one again it's not quite cut through right there but if I go from the back it looks perfect from the front now I'm going to create a shaker card a clean and simple shaker card now I've got some acetate here and I'm going to put this over the back of my circle I picked this up from the charity shop I went to at the weekend if you haven't got any acetate, then you can use packaging, the clear plastic windows that come in boxes of things. If you take those out before you recycle the boxes, you can use them for your shakers. I want to adhere the acetate down. And I'm gonna use this Crafters Companion tape. I think that will be adequate, make sure there's none poking through. And just pop the acetate over the back there. And then I'm going to go around it with foam tape. And because this foam tape is going to have to curl, I am taking the release paper off because it makes it so much easier to curve around than when you've got the release paper on. There we are. And because this is quite a shallow foam, I'm going to do a double layer. Now I need something to go in my shaker. I don't have any sequins, but I'm going to create my own. So I've got a piece of this rose gold foil cardstock. And on the back, I'm going to use some of this prism, hunky dory prism, world of colour, pearlescent powder, sparkling sapphire. It's like a luscious powder, any kind of pigmented mica powder. And I'm going to paint it on the back of this. Just take some out to make a paint, that's going to be more than enough. Get my paintbrush all nice and wet. That's a very rich blue, but that's great for some sparkly sequins. And I'm going to paint it on the back of this. Doesn't have to look perfect. I just want something blue and shimmery. 
I'm trying not to get it on my fingers because I don't want to look like a smurf for the rest of the week. And I'm going to thoroughly dry that with my hair dryer because I want to die cut from this and it will die cut better if it's really dry. And I have here a small cover plate die that's got lots of circles and they're wonky circles, they're not perfect circles. So you've seen me over the last few days use this to create enamel dots because they give me a lovely round circles. This one gives me wonky circles. So just going to go and die cut. Hang on. No, yes, I don't need to put any adhesive on because these are going to be sequins. As you can see, it's cut through beautifully. You just need to poke a couple out there. And then the rest are in here. I might be able to tap them out. I don't want them disappearing all over the place though because I do want to keep them. But I shall poke all these out and then come back. So we have a lovely pile of homemade sequins. So you could leave the foiled card or whatever card you use to make your sequins. You could leave it white if that's what you wanted, but by colouring it on the back with a shimmery blue powder, it doesn't matter which way up my sequins go, they're going to look good. They're going to be, you're going to be able to see some of the rose gold and you're going to be able to see some of the blue and if they flip over then that's absolutely fine. This could probably handle some more in there, but I think we'll leave it like that now. And I'm just going to pop that on there so I can flip that over because I want to put, hang on, let's, some of these are static to the acetate and that's fine because that keeps them, keeps them where I want them. And I want to put this in the right place here like that so it's replaced so the sequins are on the recessed stripe and to do that I'm going to get some double sided tape and put it on the back of my circle here and I am going to have to put my head right over it so I can see so I'll cut that bit out because the last thing you want to do is spend any time looking at the back of my head Right, I think that's fine. I think we've got that how I want it. And now I can stick that on the back of my card, or the front of my card even, but I need to put a double layer of foam all the way around. So now I've got my card blank. I'm just going to position this on by eye and hope for the best. Now, I need my birthday circle now I'm trying to decide whether I want it to go across like that or diagonal in line with the stripes but I'm thinking like that let me know what you think which way would you do it would you do it diagonal or horizontal so I'm going to cut this out of smooth white cardstock to start with to see if it stands out enough if not I might think of something else to do it from. So I've actually cut this out of three different cardstocks. So I've got white, I think that looks quite nice, but I'm not sure if it's quite striking enough. Black, that is definitely striking here, but I think the happy birthday gets lost. And the other one was copper glitter cardstock. which are quite like, but then again, I'm thinking it's going to get lost. It's the happy and the birthday that stands out the most on that circle. But what if I just used the happy and the birthday from these as a drop shadow? Let's do that. Where's my little scissors? Okay, I'm going to cut the happy out. I did that. I think, yes, I'm going to do that right. I think we'll abandon the glitter. 
because I'm not sure that's adding. Get some glue, spread it out and dip the happy in. And then I just want to neaten up this end so that that doesn't show. Pop the happy over the top offset slightly. Yep, we're rather like that. And then I'm going to do the same with the birthday. And then, yeah, I quite like that. I think that little drop shadow is just enough. Let's add some more glue and then we can glue our circle down. I think I'm at the bottom of this glue bottle now. Pop that on there. Try and get that horizontal. It's a bouncy font, so it doesn't matter if it's not quite horizontal. I don't think it's possible to get it exactly horizontal. Right, deli paper for a press down. And I'm thinking I might just get, see if I can squeeze a few more of these and then add them like enamel dots. Just a, a couple on the outside of it. Right, I'm just going to dip these in some glue because I've got glue here. So I pop that on there and get a few different sizes. Right, I think that will do. I'm really happy with that. I like the way it's turned out. I got some good use out of my blue Distress Oxides. I hope you've enjoyed the video and that it's given you some ideas of things you could do with some of the dyes and bits and bobs in your stash. If you'd like to see more from me, do subscribe and ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here tomorrow for Indigo Day. Right, thanks for watching. Bye for now.